In today's video, we're going to be discussing Acuity Ads, which has been on my radar for quite some time, as well as it's been an investment of mine in the past. If you guys are new here, my name is Daniel, and here on this channel, we talk about Canadian stock market investing. So if you're interested in that, subscribe down below. As well as if you want to see when I'm buying or selling different stocks, I've got a Patreon link there as well. Lastly, if you want a free spreadsheet tracker for your portfolio, I've got a link in the pinned comment. The way that I'm going to break down this review is first going over the business and how Acuity Ads actually makes money. Second, we're going to talk about some of the pros about the business. Third, we're going to go over some of the cons. And finally, I'll let you guys know what my position on Acuity Ads is. So first, starting off with the business. Acuity Ads is a demand side platform for programmatic advertising. And in more layman terms, Acuity Ads has a platform where advertisers go onto, they can select certain criteria for their advertisements to be served up to a specific type of customer. And this can only happen because there's a lot of tracking going on on the internet. There are certain things like cookies or identifiers which will track a person's activity online. So things like what you search for, articles that you read, sites that you visit, time of day that you're even on the internet, these can all be different types of information that advertisers will use to target their advertisements towards. And now a lot of you guys might be sitting there thinking, isn't this a breach of privacy? But honestly, I think this is great because if this didn't happen, we would have to pay every single time that we visit a web page because that's how the internet's supported right now, by advertisers. And if they're not supporting it, then we're the ones who are gonna have to pay for it. So if you wanna continue viewing content for free on the internet, then this is the only way that it can be done. And what's great about programmatic advertisement is that me as a consumer on the internet am not gonna be served up women's shoes ads because that's not something I'm interested in. Rather, it's gonna target things that I'm interested in. For example, maybe YouTube studio equipment. Late last year, Acuity Ads had a new platform come out called Illumin. And this is supposed to solve a major problem for advertisers, where right now on the internet, you're being served the same ad over and over and over again, such that you might get sick of it. So after consumer sees an ad 15 times, perhaps they just have a negative view of that brand. However, on Illumin, what it does, it serves up a series of ads to a specific customer, such that they learn about different aspects of a product instead of the same video with the same information every single time. And this is more likely to have the advertiser convert that viewer into an actual customer. And as a customer, you're not annoyed by seeing the same ad over and over again because it's just a waste of your time. And when Illumin was launched last fall, we could see a QD ad stock price rise meteorically. However, since then, the stock price has come down from highs of around $32 per share to around $10 or $11 today. And that's the first pro that I have here, is the fact that the stock has dropped by about 60%, reducing the risk that you're taking in this company if you were to buy in today. Nothing major has changed about the company's business since Illumin launched, and the stock price has dropped 66%. So clearly this is just market sentiment or people just selling on news. And I think that this could be a perfect opportunity if you've looked into Acuity Ads and like the business to start dollar cost averaging into the company. If you look at some of the valuation metrics, they have a PS ratio of 5.17 according to Yahoo Finance. And in 2020 terms of PS ratios for high growth tech stocks, this isn't bad. Typically we're used to PS ratios of around 10 or 20 for these high growth tech stocks. And if we compare Acuity Ads to their greatest competitor, the Trade Desk, it trades at around 27.5 as a PS ratio. So Acuity Ads is five times cheaper in terms of PS ratio compared to the Trade Desk. One thing to look forward for Acuity Ads is that they're planning on doing a NASDAQ listing. And this will bring Acuity Ads onto the same stock market exchange as the Trade Desk and making them comparables on there. And potentially this could be a catalyst for Acuity Ads stock price because this will attract more of a broad investor base in the US. And when they see Acuity Ads multiple, their PS ratio of 5.17 versus the trade desk's 27.5, they may start to pick up Acuity Ads shares instead of the trade desk. However, remember a NASDAQ listing does not change anything about the business itself. In fact, it just requires more fees on the company's end, which may be actually a negative. When we look at the earnings of Acuity Ads, they already have positive earnings reporting an EPS of around 10 cents. And the trailing 12 month P ratio currently sits at 112, which is expensive for a value stock, but for a stock that's supposed to have higher growth going forwards in the future like Acuity Ads, this is pretty decent. The last thing that I wanna to bring to your attention is their Gloucester rating of 4.1. 
I would say this is a pretty good rating for Acuity Ads, where 78% of the people recommend Acuity Ads to their friends, as well as 89% approve of the CEO. So having happy workers is half the battle that a company has, and the other half is getting customers. So the fact that Acuity Ads has happy employees, this will mean less employee turnover, in theory. And with less employee turnover, this means there's a lot more continuity from version one to version two to version three of the product. And a lot more knowledge is retained within the company, making the company be able to develop things quicker or in a more efficient manner. Now turning over to some of the cons about this business. If we look at their latest quarterly reports, revenue growth was only around 13%, which is not really high if this company is supposed to be a high growth tech stock. Typically, we like to see around a 50 to 60% growth, especially for a company as small as Acuity Ads. However, that was not the case. And the reason for this is, last year in the same time period, there were two months where the world was not in COVID-19 lockdown. And right now, still in Canada and the US for the most part, things are not back to normal. And Acuity Ads stated that about 30% of their customers were of travel and leisure. And these two things are the most highly impacted sectors due to COVID-19. So for that reason, this is why the growth of Acuity Ads in the latest quarter was only 13% and was fairly lackluster. However, as we go forward into this year, we can see that a lot more states are reopening as well as hopefully Canada later on this year will open as well. This should ultimately supercharge Acuity Ads revenue growth to maybe around a 60 or 70% year over year. At least that's what I'm hoping for. Acuity Ads already states that travel and leisure customers should start coming back online throughout the summer as well as into the later half of this year. Another comment on Acuity Ads latest earnings is that there's a lot more full service customers on the Illumin platform versus self-serve. And the idea for Illumin platform is to be more of a self-serve platform so that Acuity Ads doesn't need to employ people to help their customers out. If customers can just use a platform themselves, it becomes a higher margin product. However, Acuity Ads has stated that first, when customers come onto the platform, they're gonna be managed by internal customer support staff. And sooner or later, that should transition over to that customer becoming fully self-serve. So if this stands true, later on in this year, we should see a lot more of these managed customers turn over and become self-serve customers. But for the time being, that can be a risk to investors as this theory has not proven out yet. Another major risk that you must consider is that looking at the total shareholders out there, a lot of shareholders probably still hold shares that were they bought under $10 per share. Some of them even bought back when it was like 90 cents per share or $2 or $3. And looking at those investors right now, they have a decent amount of incentive to sell with prices at $10 per share. Although prices did rise up to $30 per share, those people who bought under $10 per share are still up on their position. And with a high growth tech sell off, perhaps they may be looking to take off some of the risk on the table. So this could be a risk going forwards. If you were to buy in right now, there could be more selling pressure from these people who have a lower cost basis. The last risk that I'm gonna point out that really impacted the trade desk as well as acuity ads and other companies in programmatic advertising is the fact that third-party cookies are going away. And third-party cookies was one of the main ways or at least thought to be one of the main ways that programmatic advertising uses as an input for advertisers to send out ads. Now third-party cookies are basically essentially third-party software on websites that track the activity of users. It's not a cookie that the owner of the website actually puts in, but rather it's a third party cookie. And these third party cookies were relatively useful before because they could track activity like your search as well as what you're viewing. And with third party cookies going away, this caused a huge shock in the programmatic advertising company space. However, there is a new solution on the way called Unified ID 2.0, which is being developed by the Trade Desk and other companies in the space. Illumin doesn't seem to be worried that third party cookies are going away because the use of third party cookies initially was not for programmatic advertising. It was just adopted by programmatic advertisers because it was the easiest way to get data about customers. Now Unified IDs are being worked on by programmatic advertising companies. So this technology should be developed specifically for programmatic advertising and therefore theoretically it should yield better results. However, this is not guaranteed and we shall see what happens going forwards. Now as for my position on Acuity Ads, I've been dollar cost averaging into this company over the past couple of months. 
I hold 30 shares at a cost basis of $13.74. This is a relatively small position in my portfolio right now, considerably smaller than most of my other positions. But for me, what I plan to do is dollar cost average into acuity ads because right now the market is relatively rocky for these high growth tech stocks. So I think that I could probably get better prices in the future, but because I don't know where the stock is going in the future, all I know is the business seems to be relatively attractive to me and I wanna buy in at these prices right now. And if they go even lower, then awesome, I'll pick up more shares. So if you wanna see when I'm buying more acuity ads, you can check out my Patreon page down below. So that's my shorter analysis on acuity ads. Let me know what your thoughts are down below on this business. Are you buying, are you selling, or are you holding? And I'll have two videos up on the screen for you guys to check out. If you're there, I'll see you there. If not, keep up the grind and have a great day.